are back with more solitaire chess. Since uh, you guys seem to enjoy the previous solitaire chess videos, I thought I'd do some more. I'm going to do the same thing where I cover up the moves for white in the game. Now, I had to choose a game, of course, so I've seen the full game at some point, but I typically like to wait a couple weeks. I've got a database of games, and I kind of randomly pick one. So I get myself through the opening, and then we play Guess the Move, and I explain my ideas. So hopefully you guys again find this instructive. And the game that we're going to be going from today is from the Carries Memorial Rapid from 97 between my favorite player, Ulf Anderson, against Jan Elvis. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And we're going to get the first handful of moves in, and since I relatively know Ulf's repertoire, it's going to be d4, c4, knight f3 to begin. Yep. And typically, he's not so much for the immediate g3, so he would transpose back into queen pawn games to not allow any weird systems. Uh-huh. And c4 is going to be Pretty sure what he played every time he had this position. Okay. And... Ulf did two things. He will either go g3 or knight c3. And if he played knight c3 systems, he often would go bishop g5, followed by bishop takes, and create an early imbalance. So, I'm going to try knight c3 here. And I'm getting a notification that... G3, yeah, is supposed to be correct. So it is a Catalan game. Bishop E7, in this case, Bishop G2. Castles looks right. And we have an open Catalan. All right, so now in modern practice, I believe Queen C2 is the main line. And during the World Championship, the last World Championship between Carlsen and Nepo, we saw after Queen C2, B5 had some interesting games in play. I think Queen A4 may come back into style because of that. If Queen C2, typically it's A6. A4 has gotten a lot of popularity. I believe uh, Grandmaster of Rook in the GM Rep series, maybe it's 1A, can't remember if it's book 1A or 1B, but he, he recommends that it's 1A. Um, interesting play. I didn't have any trouble equalizing against it in my aggressive Queen's Gambit decline book where I recommend the open Catalan for black. Then you have moves like knight e5, which I've played in Blitz quite a lot and find interesting. And even moves like knight a3, that was played in Wiccan Z, or not Wiccan Z, it's Tata Steel. Tata Steel between Carlson and Geary. And though Geary was better with black, it was still complicated. It had some surprise value in the game. And Magnus came away with a nice win. So I'm going to go with the classic move here, Queen C2, as I'm pretty sure that's what Ulf played. And, yep. A6. And being this was 97, I don't believe A4 had any popularity yet. I don't think it did anyway. But of course, I wasn't playing chess at a reasonable level in that time period. I didn't even start playing until 2003. So I'm going to go with Queen takes C4. Yep. Queen C2 is the book move. You want to keep some pressure on the C file. Because the natural break for black is c5 in these positions. So you keep an eye on it. Bishop b7. And now there are a number of different moves. And this is where the actual solitaire chess game begins. Because this is where you need to make a plan. And black is able to equalize typically if he can get in a c5 break. And that, that's what it's all about, getting in c5. So white 
will actively play against this plan, but can't really prevent it in many variations. So bishop d2 is the main line with the idea of, say, if knight bd7, bishop a5, where you're pinning the pawn at least temporarily, and you play against games like that. And if you're interested in getting more details on that type of position and want to see complete games, look in the database for Kramnik and Gelfin games. I, I learned a lot from studying those, but it wasn't enough to help me when I played this position against Grandmaster Ponchanathan in the first round of the Castle Grand Prix in like 2014, I want to say. Another line that got a lot of popularity is the immediate bishop f4 to put direct pressure on c7. And I believe bishop d6 does pretty well there. There are lines with knight d2 followed by knight b3. Now Georg Meyer likes, likes those a lot. I'm going to go with bishop f4 as Ulf as a very direct player. Okay, was not bishop f4, though a reasonable move. Ulf played in the game. Bishop g5, okay. And this shows a willingness to part with a bishop pair immediately. If h6, you're going to grab. And then, like say for instance, I know this isn't what was played in the game, h6. I mean, just guessing, but yeah, I know. <laughs> bishop takes. And you want to worry about the d-pawn temporarily. So rook d1 looks like the best way to defend it. And we're playing against c5. We've already kind of gotten what we're looking for in the position. We've given up the bishop pair, yes, but we've got direct play against, against black. And you're looking for this type of idea to sink a knight on c5. And you can always move this knight to get rid of the bishop pair. You have an imbalance. This is the type of position that Ulf really excels at, the better minor piece type situation. So after bishop g5, h6 definitely doesn't need to be played by black. Knight bd7 is played. And I'm going to go with the immediate knight bd2 because I, I feel like that's, that's the plan in the game. And in the event of knight bd2, if h6, I'm going to take because... I don't want to waste any time going backwards here. Yeah, I don't I don't see a good reason. Actually, okay. If knight bd2, c5 immediately can be played. If bishop takes, black can even go g takes there in order to keep all eyes on c5. And though you have the double pawns, like, uh, I got more comfortable with playing those positions when I was working on the Rubenstein lines in Master of the French Defense because often you'll get those double pawns, and especially with a bishop on g2, if it can't get on this diagonal, you have nothing to worry about with black. So I think if I play knight bd2 here, the immediate c5 is going to be an issue. So I want to take here first. based on that logic. Deflect a piece and then play against that idea. Okay, following in, in the footsteps. Knight takes. And now knight bd2 seems very straightforward. Black still can't play c5, good. All right, he's trying to play c5. I want to play directly against it, knight b3. Uh-huh. c5 anyway. We're going to take it with the pawn. As the knight just seems too loose if we take there, and he may get an opportunity to jump into a5 or something. Mm-hmm. Okay, wants to play a4 to kick the knight out. So my first immediate reaction is to play a4 to stop a4, but also it's the question of, should we get time by playing rook d1? And which rook? It's an important question to ask. This rook 
I think is going to be involved with the A-pawn push. This rook isn't needed for defense of the king side or to press an attack like in King's Indians where he needs to support the F-pawn. So I feel like rook FD1, queen C7, A4 is a consideration. But if we go rook D1, he does get another attacker on the C-pawn. I'm kind of split on this one. I know a4 needs to be played because if black plays a4, our knight gets kicked to a mediocre square, and then black gets excellent play with the bishop pair in the open position. If if anything, equality is not not like your your enemy if we end up trading knight for bishop. Um I'm gonna go with rook rook d1. Rook d1, queen c7, a4, bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, pawn takes, rook takes. I don't know, trading queens that way doesn't seem appealing. We might well I mean with the knight on f6, we can't even get rook d7, so. I'm talking myself out of rook d1. I like a4 better. That's what he played in the main game. And bishop e4, a normal move in these variations to try to dislodge the queen to a less optimal square. And first reaction is queen c3 to put pressure on the a5 pawn. I really don't. Okay, queen c3, b4. Queen e3 after that. You keep protection on the b3 knight and the e pawn. And he can't really go knight g4 because the bishop's going to hang. Yeah. You just have. It, I mean, these types of positions are relatively simple, so you just need to find your path. Okay, queen c3. We're hitting the a pawn. b4 was played. Okay, queen e3. Yep, that was played as well. Bishop d5 hitting the knight. Uh, first reaction is rook fd1 to pin the knight. I mean, to pin the bishop. Then we're back to queen c7 issues. <coughs> Excuse me. It was a twofer. Am I going for the bonus? Am I getting three? No, we're good. Okay. <laughs> and this is how you know I don't ever edit my videos and I do everything in one take. All right. I don't see why I would not play rook fd1 in this position to pin the bishop to make it harder to capture the knight and win the c pawn. Because say, for instance, if rook ac1... I don't like moving the rook yet because the a-pawn could become weak in a lot of variations. And the space is beneficial to black, I feel like, if the knight on b3 is just gone. Um, rook fd1. Queen c7. If rook a c1 there... Takes on b3, takes on b3, takes on c5. You have to worry about bishop takes f2, so probably e3. Or do I? I don't know. I'm not seeing how white's maintaining an edge here. No way to, to keep the tension really well that I'm immediately seeing anyway. Um, <clears throat> got it right. But here's the thing, rook a c1, I'm not, not seeing how, okay, just rook a c1, bishop takes b3, queen takes b3, bishop takes c5, and then the threat is bishop takes f2, because after king takes queen c1, rook c1, 
Rook takes. This knight, bishop, and queen versus two rooks and a knight. That's that's better for the, the queen. Unless we're getting mated with like knight g4 in there. Yeah, it looks pretty nasty. I don't want to allow that. Rook c1 is not the radar if... It's, it's all about all the tactics with this. I think it's more important to prevent the bishop from getting to c5. If we... Yeah, rook a c1, bishop takes b3, queen takes b3, bishop takes c5, and... You got to go e3 there, and I feel like black's just completely equalized. No real issues, and that's that. So it makes me start wanting to look for alternatives. Got to worry about the b3 knight in every situation here. So the bishop pair is an issue. Which leads me to think that. And that way we will be trading off, but we're trading off in a way where black gets absolutely no positive imbalance. That bishop on c5 just looks too good. I think this is the critical moment of the game right here. It's easy to play rook a c1 and, and go sideways. And I, I don't see anything else. Rook a c1 just so natural, but I think black gets gets an edge there. So in any other move other than knight f to d4 just looks busted immediately. I'm going to try it. Okay, I feel like I'm doing a lot better than I did last time, but also I play this exact type of cattle in position on a regular basis, so... I could feel good. All right, what did black do? Oh, we'll take back. I'll take back. Okay, I was wrong there. Take back immediately. I guess this gives him more opportunity to to trade or go after a weakness after queen a2. Okay. When you can keep tension, keep tension. Knight takes, queen b7 check. Rook takes, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes. Pawn takes, ruins the pawn structure. That's not very off. Queen takes d4, queen b7 check. f3. Rook takes. Rook takes. Looks good. Yeah, all, all captures are possible. I'm not sure which one's the best here. This is the knight. I mean, the, the queen and the knight are both covering c1, so there's no queen for two rooks straight here. Okay, so knight takes d4. Let me start with that one. Knight takes d4, queen b7 check, king g1, rook takes c1, rook takes c1. 
and then knight d5. And let's say if, if the knight somehow got to b5, what does it do there? I think the knight's good on b3 because it's, it's hitting the weakness on a5. So I'm not, not in a hurry to move that knight because it's on a good square already. Okay, so we ruled out knight takes d4 because of that's, that's my logic. Okay, now queen or rook takes d4. These are the candidate moves. Queen takes d4 seems logically more flexible, but also after queen b7, king g1, rook takes, rook takes, rook c8. I don't know, rook takes, queen takes. Queen c5. That looks really good. And I don't see how you're punishing. Queen takes, queen b7. King g1. Knight d5. I think it's easy to get to the a pawn. I'm going with queen takes d4. Because I don't see the benefits of rook takes d4. Nope. We'll have to go back and see what was wrong with that one later. Wolf played rook takes. And queen b8. I think I'm having the impulse of monkey c check, monkey do check with queen b7. Because you may want to keep that in reserve later. And the a pawn is the only weakness in the position. So keeping the queen on b8 keeps me off of e5. If I go queen g5 to hit the a pawn again. Okay, yeah, knight takes a5, queen a8 check. That's classy defense by Elvis. And queen g5 is met by rook takes c1, knight takes c1, which deflects, and then queen a8 check. So queen g5, I, I want to add pressure to the a pawn, but I don't want to go backwards. Again, the knight on b3 is like the main guy in the position because he's bothering the a pawn um i do like king g1 prophylaxis against this idea and it renews the threat so king g1 rook takes queen takes and after say something like rook c8 i have rook c4 takes takes and on something like queen a8, I don't think you have enough because of queen b5. Where the a pawn falls. I like it. <clears throat> King g1. King g1. Knight d5. Queen d2. Rook takes, queen takes. Rook c8, rook c4. Rook takes, queen takes. Queen a8. Queen b5, same sort of idea. Or queen b6 instead of queen a8. Back rank issues. Okay, yeah. I am going with king g1. Nope. I have to look at that one too, because that seemed logical. Ulf in the main game played rook dc4. That makes a lot of sense. Keep control of the file. All right, now where's the best square for the queen? I would ideally like to keep an eye on the a pawn, but I don't think that's gonna be a possibility here. Queen g5 is met by like h6, and you're just giving black space for the king. Queen e5 hangs the queen. So yes, what is the most flexible square? And we got queen f3. Queen d4 seems centralized and 
in the event of rook takes, queen takes, we have complete control over the c-file. So keeping an eye on the forward rook seems like a good idea. Queen d4. You also have to worry about knight b6 and some lines too. Yeah, so keeping the queen on this diagonal seems important because, say for instance, if queen d4, knight b6 hits the pawn, hits the rook, we trade off everything. And that'll at least, well, that leads to mate. So you'd have to take there and you lose the knight. Lots of arrows, sorry. Um, yeah, queen d4. All right, on point with that one. We'll take with the queen. Okay. Problems in paradise. Well, both of those can be defended. How best to handle all the issues? You got two attackers. Rook c2 seems simplest to keep tension. But after rook c2, knight b6, you play a move like queen b5, queen e4 check is going to pick up the rook on c2. So it seems kind of loose. If e4, knight b6 again, that looks kind of sketchy too. This is not the easiest. Oh, what am I saying? The, the queen's covering the e-pawn. It's the b-pawn that's a problem. If I go queen d4 here, queen takes e2, knight takes a5, my passer is better than yours. Queen d4, and if queen takes, knight takes, we definitely have the better, better pieces and better ending, and it's easier to get to the weaknesses. Queen d4, queen takes, e2, knight takes a5, queen a6. Hard to evaluate. <clears throat> I like queen d4, though. Queen d4, queen e2, knight a5. Rook a8. Well, he still has back rank problems, though. Say so I go knight c4, or you can't go knight c4, knight b3 after that. Queen d4, queen e2, knight a5, e5. That doesn't work either because I can just take the knight. I'm going queen d4. Nope. Rook c2, first reaction. Got it. And after knight b6... This is the move I was worried about because of queen e4 check. So you got to cover queen e4 check and you give up the a pawn to get his a pawn and it just looks like a draw. Queen d4? Queen d4 looks like the only move. Yeah, that's what he played. Okay, now we need to go after the A pawn. Uh huh. We take the A pawn. Okay. And Ulf wins this game. I know this. <laughs> so, but how? <laughs> uh, well, the B pawn is weak. I'd like to be able to move the rook. So I'm gonna go with the logical looking enough. B3. Okay. All right. Now I want to go knight C6 with the idea of hitting the rook. Rook moves. Knight takes B4 if rook takes. I dislodge his knight on C3. Just remove the guard. So knight C6. 
Yep. Knight takes b4. Yep. Okay. This is definitely a draw if I take the knight. Do I have anything else I can do? Um, yeah, my impulse is to trade down, and I know that's a problem that I have. So I'd be like, okay, rook takes, rook takes, rook e3, and maybe my king gets around, but that feels like such a draw. It's when it's only one. Yeah. Rook takes, rook takes, rook e3, king e7. <clears throat> Actually, rook takes, rook takes. Not rook e3, but rook b2 and rook b4. You're on the better side of the pawn, but even when the king gets over to c3 and dislodges the rook, the black king can get to a reasonable square. So, like, the black rook is going to defend all the pawns on the seventh, and the black king is going to be the one blockading the pawn. He's going to take that type of route. So I don't see how we're going to make progress, even with both kings, if both kings are around the b-pawn. That looks like a draw. Okay, so knight moves. Uh... Knight a2 seems extremely passive. You do have the benefit that when moving the knight, if rook takes pawn, you're going to take the knight as long as the knight is on a decent square. Not those. So that only leaves c6 and a2. And since a2 is more passive, knight c6 makes a lot of sense. Knight c6 if rook takes b3, rook takes e2 with a winning ending. So knight c6, knight d4 can't be played, and <laughs> is the knight out of squares after knight c6? That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, that's what he played in the game. e5, so he gets a square. So in the event of, say, king f3, knight d4. Oh, if king f3, rook takes c6. So if you're going to do that, you better go king f1. Knight takes e5 looks right, though. Yeah, after knight takes e5, you're threatening the fork, and you're threatening that. So what's the problem? That's what he played? Okay, so white has a pawn in hand, but it is a question of what has the most winning chances here, because the most forcing move is, of course, the check. Knight d7, and after king e7, knight takes b6, knight takes c2, and with the b-pawn, is that enough to win? I, I honestly don't know. I haven't studied this type of ending with knights and an extra outside pass pawn. Logically, to me, I would say it feels like that's winning. Check, takes, takes, and then say knight c4. I'm not in a hurry to push the b pawn because I want his king to waste time coming all the way over while our knight is going to bother the pawns on the king side and our king tries to walk up and make a path. You want the pawns to move, so. But it takes a long time. I feel like I'm leaning more towards that's a draw, which is a good thing to come back and review. So, next reaction is do we have any tricks here, like rook c4? Rook c4 keeps tension well. 
if rook c4, knight takes b3, knight d7, rook c4, rook d6, and b4. Same kind of issue. The b-pawn just doesn't seem enough in a lot of variations, and I'd rather trade down than not. Okay, another idea altogether is to go rook c7. Rook c7, you say, okay, you can have the b-pawn. Rook takes b3, but I get rook takes f7. All right. I'm going to go knight d7. That is not what Ulf played. Ulf played rook c7. Got it. <laughs> so I was close. Uh, rook takes b3. Rook takes f7. The only reason to do this. Okay, if rook d7 were hitting the knight and threatening back rank mate. So that seems very logical. All right, and if knight e6, which was played in the game, there's no back rank mate because of knight f8. Well, there's no back rank mate because you just take the rook. Um, rook e7. Rook e7 looks good. That's my first reaction. If rook b6, rook e8, knight f8, knight d7. Actually, no. Rook e7, rook b6, rook e8, knight f8, rook takes f8, king takes f8, knight d7, and you win. I'm going rook e7. That's what he played in the game. Oh, we've seen the tactic already. Rook e8 check. Only knight f8. Rook takes f8. King takes f8. Knight d7. King moves, we take the rook. Yes. Yes. And that was the end of the game. All right. So I think I did, did better overall than the last time we did a solitaire chess, but this is a game and a structure I'm more comfortable with, and the ideas were pretty straightforward to me. So let's go back. I'm going to turn on the engine now and take a look at the moves that I did wrong and we're going to compare and see see what we got here okay so I said knight takes c5 immediately here but that one is wrong because of queen b6 and this is just supposed to be completely equal according to the machine beast all right rook ac1 keeps tension and according to the engine white has an about a pawn edge here so he did get a little bit of something um it actually liked my move better here i don't feel as bad now queen takes d4 and after queen b7 king g1 Queen a8, grab, grab, queen b6. And black is supposed to play h5 or g6 and suffer as I grab the a pawn. Okay, so I don't feel bad about, about that one. Going a few moves further after rook takes. I said king g1 here. King g1 is second choice of the engine. Oh, no, it got moved down. Rook takes c8 is number one, and rook dc4 is number two. I said king g1, which doesn't lose the edge, but it gives time for black to make a luft, and we saw he had back rank problems the rest of the game. h6 should be played, and the longer the engine's thinking, the more it says white has about four-tenths of a pawn, so it doesn't ruin anything. Okay, don't feel bad about that one. I think one of the last ones I had was here. It was queen d4. Um, engine says you can actually play knight takes a5 here. 
well, I'm gonna have to look at that one. Knight takes a5, queen takes b2, knight b3, and h6 again, a5. And this does not look trivial by any means. My move, queen d4, is equal after queen takes, knight takes, and h5. f5 is also equal. So now there's no back rank issues which was something I didn't consider. So I didn't blunder the game, but I definitely didn't do anything to make white's life easier and keep tension. So queen takes d4 is a mistake on my part. And then one of the last ones, I said knight d7 here. Ooh, it says that rook c4, which was also one of my reactions, that's actually winning here. After rook d6, rook c8, Rook c7, and knight takes f7. Because you need to move the rook, say rook d7, and that, that wins on the spot there. So rook d5 is met strongly by f4, and the knight has a great place to post. You don't even have time to do this, because again, knight g5. Yeah. So, <clears throat> rook c4 was very strong. You get full credit if you saw that one. And knight d7 is second choice. That, that wins. But it's back to a rook c4 idea. And you're holding on to the pawn this way. Engine's all about holding on to the pawn. My curiosity was this line. You don't want to push, you want to chill. He tries to keep you out. E4, I would go H4. And this looks like a draw. If it's not a draw, this looks extremely difficult to win because anytime you push the G-pawn to make progress, it trades, and you just have to sack the remaining knight for the pawn. So I probably would have drawn this game with my initial reaction. But it was critical here, keeping tension. Rook c4 is considered best. Ulf's move, rook c7, was third choice according to the engine. But after rook takes b3, Rook d7, rook e7. Knight f8 must be played now. And after rook e8, rook b7, very important to stop the knight from getting in. Probably Elvis was in wicked time trouble at this point. But check. And I'm very pleased I was able to see the finishing tactic in advance. I would have added more suspense <laughs> if... I remembered that it happened in the main game. So we had uh, another Ulf game for solitaire chess with this interesting bishop g5 in the cattle. And, and though white didn't get much, it was just enough. And this is what makes Ulf famous as he just seems to get equal positions, but somehow wins. Very clean play, always my favorite player.